So we're tying on a, uh, a woolly bugger. It's got a little drastic there. We've used the, the dry and it hasn't been working. So this, it uh, moves a lot more water, creates a little bit more urgency and uh, a little bit short on hand. So we're hoping these uh, fish are gonna put it in their mouth and then it's too late. Because if you can't catch a trout in a trout farm, you're in a bit of strife. Well, there's one there. There we go. Michael, I, I didn't want to say anything, but I wasn't catching too many fish. It might be a trout farm, but it's my personal pond. Your little pond. You know, you've taught all these ones. <laughs> and just a great place to, uh, to come and learn, really, isn't it? I mean, it's, you're going to get a lot of practice. The fish are definitely going to obviously be here. And to bring the kids, you know, it, it's just a, just a great place. So if you're just getting into fly fishing, you know, a place like this is going to give you a lot of opportunities to learn. So this is a this is a, a brook trout. It certainly oh, is. Yeah. Yes, it looks like a male. Yep, male brook trout. Yep. Wow. Completely different shape. Are they all that, or I suppose they just vary. They're all individual. Uh, that's, that's a male. There. Yep. Uh, the females are pretty much along the trout line species of your yes. rainbow and, and your brown, uh, whereas the male, yeah, it is a interesting looking fish character. there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and just that woolly bugger, just that, uh, just that little bit of movement creates that little bit of urgency, and we'll get it before the little mate gets it, and away they go. So these browns in, in trout farms are nowhere near as, I guess, popular, I guess, or they're harder to maintain and produce, are they? They are, and not really, I guess, a commercial fish. Yes. And if we're going to go to the trouble of weighing them, he's, uh, yeah, there you go, five pound. Yeah, and I think there's a lot to be said, I mean, if you're going to, Quite often we always release all our fish, but if you're going to eat them, this is the place where you catch them. You know, you catch them in a trout farm uh, and you, you cook them up and yeah, they're perfect. So uh, don't keep everything you catch out in the rivers, but certainly in a place like this, this is where you get to taste them. Oh, there's a goldie. Oh, and he hit. Come on. Yes. He went there you on. go. So we were. Uh... Clean sweep. Yep. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. We've got to bring it in. Wow. There you go. We were just saying, Michael's playing out a, uh, a nice little um, rainbow there. I said, all we need is a, a little goldie. And you can see the difference. They're very closely related, obviously, with that big red stripe on it. But uh, they're well sought after, the goldies, aren't they? In the. Yeah, in in the Asian market, very yes. popular in the Asian market. Your own pond. Right, beautiful, thank you very much for that. No going. worries, and we can get this one in. Get them both. Almost beautiful. You know, I'll just grab the rod off you a bit. It's two. Perfect. So uh, that's our, uh, our clean sweep. We've got all, all species now. And there, there they are, just a. Funny enough, you couldn't guess why they call them goldies, could you? you know, so no, that's, that's the, right. The difference in the. The rainbow to the goldie, and the browns and the brook trout, they're all completely different, aren't they? Oh, they most certainly are. Yeah.
we've got a lovely brown. Oh, if you, you can have a look at the size of that. He's probably, he's probably three or four pound. And uh, just a nice solid fish. You can just see that they're, they're just not short of tucker there. Got plenty of, plenty of power. I presume he's a brown. Looks pretty brown to me. Our way to spend a little bit of time down here in uh, no G. Is that a uh, is that an Atlantic? Could use that. Oh, you bugger! And uh, just to release, but you saw him anyway. He wanted that fly more than me anyway, so he's decided to take that. But a little bit of a lot of water on the lens, but that's what the fishing's about. Beautiful. Well, it's about the end of our, uh, our show today. I hope you've enjoyed it and seen something a little bit different on what uh, the Alpine Trout Farm is all about. Uh, I just couldn't help myself. I, we ate a couple of these trout and they were absolutely magnificent. I thought I'll just have a couple more casts. So uh, even in a trout farm, this fly fishing just gets you. You just want to come back out and have one more cast. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to catching you next week on the fly. He wouldn't believe it, just Ed's turned the camera off and he's walking up the track where we're about ready to pack up and I've, after that uh, Atlantic broke off, I thought I need a couple more casts. So I tied on another bigger woolly bugger and three casts later, we've got an absolute monster. And again, it, we're not in the, you know, in the middle of Alaska that you, you know, you're going to get it mounted or anything like that, but still just great fun. Just in a great solid fish in this sort of water is fantastic. I'll bring him up there. Need a bigger net. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, what's oh, the thumper? It's a thumper. That's a good fish. And he's a. Uh, so that's an Atlantic salmon. That would be an Atlantic salmon. Yeah. Fish. Fantastic. Yep. There you go. You Very good. The yeah. The I'll go. I'll. Uh, we'll in. see where we're at. It's a good solid fish, you can see the depth. And that's a fish that's living um, completely on his own. They're feeding normally off natural insects and uh, obviously a little smelt and, and yabbies and things like that. Just a beautiful fish, Atlantic salmon. <laughs>